fire, or rapid combustion, is well understood today. In terms of chemistry, it is the rapid oxidation process of a substance, resulting in production of heat, light, and other reaction products. As it is the oxidation of a material, it implies that oxygen is required for fire. However, oxygen was only discovered in 1772. Modern science and chemistry were around for a couple of centuries before that, and humans had been using fire for thousands of years. Scientists must have been intrigued about fire, and there must have been theories to define what is actually going on. But how was any of this possible, without the knowledge of existence of oxygen? This is when the scientists came up with the phlogiston theory, a term derived from a Greek word meaning, in flame. The phlogiston idea was first proposed in 1667, by J.J. Bescher, and later formalized by George Ernst Stahl. The flawed theory was accepted and studied, for over a century. So what is phlogiston, and why were these scientists so wrong? As per the theory, every substance that burns, contains a fire-like element, called phlogiston. And that they deflogisticate when burned, releasing the stored phlogiston. The released phlogiston is then absorbed by the air. The first question that comes to the mind is that, why doesn't air catch fire spontaneously? as it absorbs all the phlogiston released by burning. A simple explanation that was given to counter this was, the phlogiston in the air is absorbed by plants, which is the reason plant material burns so well. What are flames? asked someone. As per the theory, flames are a mix of phlogiston and water, created when a phlogiston and earthy mixture could not burn properly. The phlogiston theory also mentioned that metals, calcinated, by losing phlogiston to become oxides, called calx, at that time. When the oxide was heated with a substance rich in phlogiston, such as charcoal, the calx again took up phlogiston and regenerated the metal. But this creates another problem. If metals lost phlogiston during calcination, then why were the calces heavier than the metal itself? The theory was so flawed that it kept contradicting itself. The scientists did not want to give up the idea, so they kept patching the theory, even though it did not make any sense. Thankfully in 1772, a Swedish chemist, Carl Wilhelm Scheele, discovered oxygen. Experiments by Antoine Lavoisier, ultimately explained the relation of oxygen and fire, and finally put the phlogiston theory to rest. <laughs>